SPACs have been around for a long time. They've gotten a lot of publicity so far this year. Some people come out and say that they're a total bubble, that it's just basically a scam. You're trying to get, you find money to buy something and it's not good for investors. What's the pushback for that? Well, the pushback is that is happening, unfortunately. However, with A Star One, we're looking to really reform uh, the industry. We've seen a lot of kind of crazy phenomenon, whether it was the internet being around for decades and then legitimizing in the 90s, or whether even Bitcoin, if, if you're following that. Well, SPACs have been around for decades, and we're just at the top of the first inning. We're not at the bottom of the ninth. It's just starting, and it's really at ASTAR, our parent company, and one, our first vehicle. We're really here to reform the space. We're going to get the economics in line. We're going to Amazonify the economics. We're going to drive out the carpetbaggers and really bring those in that want to find great durable companies and grow with them for the long term. Kevin, is this Silicon Valley's way of overthrowing the IPO process that they have been frustrated with for so long? Well, uh, my wife, Julia, went through the IPO process, the traditional process, just uh, in, the, in September of 2018. And it was a great uh, experience, to be honest. It was distracting. It was many quarters long. The management team uh, had to focus on, you know, bringing this company public. And it was complex. And what a SPAC is, is an alternative uh, kind of tool or arrow in the quiver of a uh, way to get to the public markets. What's really happening is this swing from staying private forever. Uh, we're now at an average of 12 years staying private to getting into the public market sooner. Mm -hmm. Kevin, I couldn't help but notice you had one book runner on this deal. It was Goldman Sachs. Is this a way to lower the fees you pay on going public with fewer banks? Well, uh, Goldman is a trusted partner. We work with them with Eventbrite. And just the fact that Goldman Sachs uh, is the sole underwriter here really just means that this space is legitimizing. We're working with a Silicon Valley law firm. Uh, we're bringing all that Silicon Valley magic into this. Our fees will be lowered by lowering the warrant coverage. Uh, and we see that we launched with a quarter of a warrant. And you'll see that we'll reform the economics uh, really in the sponsor. The sponsor, against my own best interest, is an egregious amount of money to be made. And we need to really make that by holding these shares, finding a durable company that's going to be around for decades to come, holding those shares, uh, and, and really uh, being a partner for this company as a shareholder, a long-term shareholder. What, what are your qualifications for what you're going to buy? Well, we are uh, came out as a $200 million SPAC. We had an incredible amount of demand. We we're many times oversubscribed, and we really kept it at $200 million. And that means that we can uh, go after and find a partner company that's on the order of a billion dollars. And there's this mega SPAC phenomenon happening that started in just the last 18 months, where SPACs have grown from you know, 400, 600, 800, a billion dollars and beyond. And we find so many great companies that are going to be those enduring leaders tomorrow that will be the Amazons and Microsofts and, and Googles of tomorrow. And so we're looking for something around that range that has just inflected. We're looking for companies with solid fundamentals. We're not looking for these moonshot companies. We're looking for those that have revenue, fast growing revenue. Uh, high margin revenue and really amazing management teams in a very unique contrarian space. Kevin, it's hard not to ignore what's going to be one of the biggest IPOs of the year. Speaking of investing, you've been an angel investor in a lot of companies like Airbnb. What do you think that's going to be valued at as it goes public? Well, it's always good to let the market uh, value these companies. Uh, well, in, and, you know, and I would just bring it back to I've been a holder of Airbnb over 10 years, and I expect to hold that for uh, another 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, it's a great company. And so I'm not that interested in what the IPO price is, believe it or not. I'm interested in, in investors should be interested in what that business is worth 10 years from now. And that's what we're looking for in our SPAC is we're going to find one of these durable companies, hold on to it. My biggest cardinal sin is selling too early. Uh, and I've learned the hard way that holding that the best thing to do is hold, buy and hold a great company. Uh, totally understood about the long-term hold here, but it is going public at an interesting time in the middle of a COVID-19 pandemic. How is that going to impact investor demand on the front end, you think, uh, into public markets? Well, 
great institutional long only investors will always look for quality. There's been a temporary dislocation in the market. Uh, it, it will come. It will come back. We're already seeing a lot of local travel happening on Airbnb. Uh, Eventbrite is seeing a big dislocation from COVID. Uh, but people will gather together. People will travel, and they'll do so. We're seeing the future uh, push forward faster through COVID. One of the small silver linings of that is whether it's video communications, whether it's food delivery. Uh, we're seeing technology take a bigger, uh, broader role, and we really want to help facilitate these great founders and CEOs, get their companies into the public light, and really build these durable businesses with this opportunity. Hey, Kevin, um, what kind of company would you might have invested in like nine months ago versus now? Because you mentioned like Zoom, online video. Like, I don't think that would have been sexy nine months ago. Well, uh, I, I think that uh, remote meetings, being able to do this now, I mean, I would take our roadshow. The, the SPAC phenomenon is partially fueled by this future coming quickly. So we did uh, two dozen roadshow meetings in a day, which normally would have taken weeks to travel around the country and sometimes the world. So being able to, and, and this actually fuels in this, this SPAC phenomenon and why we think there'll be many more uh, opportunities in, in great SPACs coming to market, why we think we think this is the here and now. The why now question is always asked by great investors of why is this business, why is this startup going to uh, win and grow over the time? And this is the why now for SPACs.